We're honored to have Richard Wells join us in the EdTech Lounge. Richard is an EdTech influencer who founded EduWells, a top 10 education blog. And he's the author of A Learner's Paradise, How New Zealand is Reimagining Education, the deputy principal of Aurea College in New Zealand. So welcome, Richard. It's great to have you. It's exciting. Always like to talk about New Zealand. You started as a teacher in the UK and then you kind of moved to, to New Zealand. That sounds like a pretty big move. We had three weeks in the middle of winter in New Zealand. In that trip, we walked past a elementary school and, and it had a low little white picket fence and the kids were, you know, the public were free to, to walk on and, and, and it just, kids were up trees and, and it was just a, a, a really, we thought that's a, that's a much better model for schools. And then, and then I started looking into the school system and it seemed more flexible, it seemed more exciting. Yeah, we just got really excited by the whole experience and, uh, and then literally six months later, we were purchasing our first house in Auckland. That first school, um, that was the private school in Auckland. Yeah, so I had a Skype interview from the UK to Auckland and I got myself a job as the head of technology at um, a private school in, in, in South Auckland. Um, I was more interested and excited by jumping jumping ship and getting into the New Zealand system. Even in your book, you go so far as to say that the, the New Zealand system may be one of the best in the world. What did you discover there? Like, why is it so great? The curriculum is a brief document that outlines kind of the core values and the core concepts of what schools should be doing. Schools are given the autonomy to, to completely design for their own community how how they go about achieving those aims. And it means that every school gets to personalize the approach. How does that work? The school has the permission from the government to become a project-based integrated curriculum uh, where there is no maths lesson, but maths is integrated into a numerous projects you'll be running. Students will be given the opportunity to work with their expert teachers in, in how their projects will sign off and get the credits from those standards. And then the universities in this country accept those credits from those standards regardless of how you've achieved them. Normally when I hear about standards, I'm thinking about a standardized test, but you're, you're telling me that these credits are accepted everywhere. Most of the standards will be competencies or skills um, or, or demonstrations of knowledge. They're purposefully written in very generic terms so that they will they will fit. So you'll have, you know, carry out a scientific analysis. And then within that, it, there will be statements about what, what, what a good scientific analysis includes. But it means that a student or a school or a teacher can manipulate how that, that appears in the project work. Teachers um, are trusted. Um, to moderate their own assessment program. There was a challenge of a lot of people leaving schools. 40% had left school before finishing. How did this particular program help to turn that around? The standardized system would always under um, serve at least 40% of your population. You, you'd have 40% would not achieve. So they needed um, and, and realized that people gain success in different ways. And some people are great at writing and some people are great at performing. And so so our another major part of our high school assessment and, and, and assessment across the country is that students are allowed to prove their knowledge, skills and competencies in a format that, that best suits them. One student in a, in a class can submit video and another teach, another student can write an essay. Some of those schools are, are already now accepting video and written work and blog for the same assessment. Teachers um, are trusted um, to moderate their own assessment program. How does it compare to other systems that are, are there around the world? New Zealand comfortably sits in the top 10 for PISA. It shows that our, our open, flexible approach works just as well, you know. How does New Zealand manage just the volume of uh, content that has to be reviewed all the time? So that rather than having this crunch point where, you, where the tests have come in and you've got to, everything has to be marked, uh, the projects and the credits and standards can be signed off and, and work. You can, you're working with the student all the way through the project. So, so all of that workload of, of suddenly having to grade everyone and, and mark thing, it can be spread. The other big time saving in a, in a situation like that is that you're not standardized teaching. 
you know all that all of that time in the class where teachers around the world are are using up hours like delivering material to to all you know in a one size fits all kind of way you know you're gaining all that time so there are there are hours days months saved in 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 working with the students and the students owning their own process if a chemistry teacher wants to deliver um everything you need to know for the year um and and delivers it to camera in video format no course goes beyond four hours i have seen high school graduation chemistry done in four hours the final year i've done i've seen history done in four hours i've done it myself i did mine were only three hours 20 minutes so how is that possible like this is a whole semester it's removing the time it takes you to do a drawing it's the time it takes for you to write on that whiteboard it removes the time that you're actually repeating yourself because you're not sure if all 30 kids got that and, and all the students these days who live on youtube would rather have access to all of that on video. And the irony there is that the most successful student in your school would request it by video, and the least successful student in your school would also request it by video. So if you want a first step, is to ensure that every teacher has videoed the content. And seriously, they need to be convinced that their entire year is condensed to four hours. Now, can you talk a little bit about you know, the, some of the practical tips in the book? Uh, that would be useful for other educators? You can watch the videos at home, you can watch them in the lesson, you can watch them with me, you can watch them, you control how you access the material, and then we have all of the classroom time to practice and to and to test and to and to challenge yourself, not challenge the class in a standardized test, but how, you, how can you challenge yourself that you know this and you won't really understand it. And part of those challenges will be student-based, it will be students challenging each other, it will be students working in teams to, to to build something or to develop something based on what they all picked up in the videos. We've moved on from technology because our system is no longer about delivery. It's all about student agency. This is the issue that the standardized schooling doesn't address is that you don't, as an individual, you don't exist. You are being right. processed by a system. Mm. And so you don't gain the confidence that you would gain because because you don't exist in your school day. The important thing about personalizing is that you, you learn about yourself. Um, a lot of students haven't even thought of themselves in that way because they've been, they've spent 13 years being processed. What are the benefits to me as an employer um, to, to having, you know, having students who are taught with this method? In the world we live in now, if a company is not continuously adapting, it will die. It will be replaced by, by an app, it will exactly. be replaced by a cloud service. And unless you're in tune and on top of everything, unless you employ people who expect to be on top of everything, um, then you're, you're not going to survive in, in, this, in this world. The focus of a 21st century system in education has got to be on developing a sense of self. So you need a school system that, that is based on developing a sense of purpose. A lot of those projects are directly business or community links. They are, they are not what we call dumpster projects. They are not school projects that go in the bin at the end of the year. They are actually real world projects, you know, communicating with real members of the community. If you were to kind of give people a quick kind of plug or a little insight into what they learned from your book, uh, what would that be? I think the, the book, the, the reason I, I liked writing this book is because I tried to be honest that we are not quite there yet. We haven't finished this process. Um, it will never finish, I guess. We might be in trouble because the world's going to change much quicker <laughs> over yes. the next two decades than maybe education will reflect. But that's what the book's about. The book's about how you transition an entire system. How would somebody from New Zealand who's kind of been through this process recommend that they, they get around these, these difficulties? Forget the technology. Changing mindsets is the hardest job that you've got. And that's part, that's mm. the major reason why it's a 20 year process. Richard, I want to thank you so much for your time here uh, on the EdTech Lounge. Thank you so much. Excellent, thanks Ed.